Hello everybody, I'm Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we like to watercolor. And we get together every single week and we do a new project and you guys paint along like and it week. is amazing. Every week, different one. It's a great point. We do a tutorial and then we do a paint along and you just paint with us, it's so great. This week we're doing the Luna Moth. Look how beautiful it is, so beautiful. So if you buy our little kit or subscribe, you'll get this cute little reference photo in there for you. So we're doing this Luna Moth with three colors. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. What colors are they? What colors are they? They are magenta and Tahoe blue and dandelion yellow. You might say those are the same colors as the citrus. Why yes. <laughs> Why yes they are. But we mix them and it's great and um, I just love colors. Okay, we're doing this. <laughs> We're doing this in uh, five steps, okay? First step for this moth. Oh, and we do it in steps because then no matter where you are on your watercolor journey, you can paint this with us. So whether you're beginning. I'm in Missouri. Yes, in Missouri. Missouri people can do this. California people can do this <laughs> anywhere. Beginner, expert. Beginner, expert, you know, hobbyist. Midwestern. Is that a word? That's a word. So we break it down into steps so you guys can follow along. We just try and simplify it for you and you will have a gorgeous painting at the end. So our first step is we are going to fill in the moth's wings with a light wash of like a light green wash. The second step is we're going to start introducing some other colors into the moth. So you see there's like blues going on in here right where it meets the body. We're going to put those in. The third step is we're going to do this rainbow color along the edge of the moth. Um, the fourth step is the body, and then the last step is just details. Details! <laughs> the last step! Details! Woo <laughs> I am using two paintbrushes today, a round six and a round two. Um, they're my go-to brushes. I love them. When you're doing larger areas, the round six is what you're going to want to use. Mm. When you're doing smaller areas or thin lines or details, Can't that's when I that use. Round six. That round six is good. It's a good round six. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to mix it together. I'm going to pull a little bit of my yellow to the center here. And I'm going to grab a little bit blue, but when you grab your blue to mix a green, you want to just do like a just a touch, just like, because the blue is very strong in color and we want it to be like a nice light green. So keep mixing in that yellow if you need to, to get it like, it's almost like a lime green. Okay. So now we have our nice light lime green and we're just going to start filling in um, our moth here. So make sure you put a little bit of water on that brush. And if you're putting down your color and you notice that it's really, um, really dark and not as light as you would like it to be, um, then you can just add water and that's going to lighten it up. Did you notice that? Is yours too dark? Uh, no, mine I feel like is good. <laughs> I like, I like what Mine's I'm doing. Perfect. No, I, you might say that mine is on point. Um, but just for those painting at home, because with <laughs> <Say> in general, <laughs> in general, because sometimes with watercolor people, um, if you're new to it, you're not familiar with how adding water actually lightens up the color. So instead of adding white to make a color lighter, you just add water to it. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Now, when you go to trace this, try and make your lines very, very light. I did mine a little bit darker so you guys can kind of see where I am on the painting, but especially with these like veins that are inside the wings, you don't want those to be too dark um, because watercolor is transparent, so you will be able to see it through the painting. Um, that's why you sometimes want to use like the softest pressure when outlining to get a really light color. Now, when I got to the bottom here, I added a touch more yellow instead of using that green mixture, just for, just for funsies. A little variety. A little variety. Because the eyeballs on the wings, you're leaving blank. Yes, we're gonna leave those eyeballs blank. Uh, that's gonna be our very last step. That's gonna be part of our details. 
We don't want to touch the eyeballs yet because if we try to fill those in while also working around with the other colors, um, it will start to kind of bleed. And that's a very dark color of the eyeballs and we don't want that to bleed into our wing. So we're going to wait to do that last when everything is dry. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Al, what don't you know? <laughs> So I did the Luna Moth because I had some requests for dragonflies and I'm like, great, I'll do a dragonfly for September. It's summery. That goes great. Here's the thing with dragonflies though. Their bodies are like, I feel like the colorful part of a dragonfly is their body, right? Mm -hmm. But their bodies are like super skinny, like sticks. And I'm like, that's not as fun, you know, to like do like a super skinny colorful body and then have like clear wings. I, like I don't know. Body shaming the fly. I'm not body shaming the fly. I'm just saying I like when areas are like big so I can play with color. And I just wasn't finding that with the dragonfly, but maybe I'm looking at the wrong kind of dragonfly. I don't know. I'm not a dragonfly connoisseur. Is that the right <laughs> word? <laughs> it's a great word. It's great. <laughs> There are dragonfly connoisseurs out there that are like, mm, she doesn't know. They're like, well, if you look at this type of dragonfly, they actually are super colorful and perfect. So if you know of a kind of dragonfly that are actually really colorful, or maybe their wings are colorful, send that my way, because uh, we can paint one. But then after looking at the, dra at the dragonflies, I was like, this isn't colorful enough. Let's do moths. And I found the Luna moth. Okay. Oh, one little, one little part on these wings here, this, this little end part on their tails. Just you like that. that a different color? Uh, I did that with a slightly different cover, color because what's going on here is the wings are actually turning in. So we're seeing both sides of the tail end of these wings. And so I did it a slightly different color because then it's just going to um, kind of pronounce that different, that different side. If we did that the same color, then it might not be totally clear that um, there's a change right there. You guys. It's pretty good. We did step one. It looks great. What is that, six minutes? We're golden. Six minutes? We're a fifth done with this painting. What's my math? That's a half hour painting. <laughs> we're going to be done so soon. You're doing great. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to step two, which is we're gonna start putting in a little bit other um, colors into our wings. Um, mainly where the, the wings meet the body here, we want it to be more concentrated in color and then it's gonna lighten up as it goes out. So I'm gonna grab some blue here. Now remember this blue is pretty strong. So um, add water to it to lighten it up so it's not like a super dark blue that you're putting on your nice light wash. And this is why I kind of drew in the veins a little bit so we can kind of um, go along those lines. So I'm going to start with the blue coming out here. And I like to put color down first and then rinse my brush and blend out. And you just kind of keep using that light blue wash. And it's going to be barely there when you're painting. That's okay. With watercolor, I feel like a lot of it is just subtle color changes. And if you're not used to painting with watercolor, you might think that you have to load your paintbrush with, you know, uh, a ton of paint, but you don't. I'm gonna turn this as I go. Also, you might notice that I'm using toilet paper here instead of paper towel. Because I run out of things. I even bust yourself out like that. I'm just being honest, okay? Toilet paper would work, will work the same. It's fine. Is it one ply? No. Two ply. I don't know. It's your toilet paper. <laughs> wow. That, did that come off saucy? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so even though that's just a little soft blue that we're adding, we're already creating a stronger interest and dimension in our wing, like as opposed to this one right here next to it or the one across from it. It just adds just a little, just adds a nice little touch. 
but remember to be, to be light with it, to be gentle. It's about finesse. Is that true? For this one. And you can even go, if you want to go a little bit darker where that meets that body, go for it. This is your painting. So you can see where the lines, um, the outlines are of the veins within the moth. I kind of left those, uh, see how there's like a white, like not a white space, but just a space. I didn't put blue there. That's how I'm kind of defining those lines. So I'm not actually outlining them with a paint color. I'm actually not touching them. And that itself is creating um, like a, a little line. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. Great, great, we're on the same page. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Put that blue down, rinse your brush off, and just blend. These colors are so pretty. Well, I was really excited about this project too because uh, my daughter's name is Luna. After the moth? <laughs> no, I didn't know that there was a moth named Luna. And I'm gonna call her Housefly. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, my husband actually picked her name. Um, Luna's the name of our moon, Earth's moon, and he's, I mean, a lot of people know that. I didn't really know that. Um, and so is it Luna or Luda? Our moon's name? No, your daughter. Luna. Oh. I thought she was after the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Allie, you know my family so well. You know that <laughs> Luna's name is Luna. You're funny. Luna. <laughs> uh, I wasn't totally sold on the name at first, but... When your husband comes to you and he's like, I had a dream that we had a little girl and she had curly hair and her name was Luna. It's like, all right. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight you on I'm this. not gonna fight you on that. So I'm doing the same thing, just filling in the blue in between those veins and then spreading it out. Um, it might mix to like a little bit of a darker green uh, in some of the areas. I embrace that. I think that's just more interest. I think that's just more color change. And I think that's actually the beauty with watercolor is because these layers are transparent. So you're going to see those color changes just from the layers. I love it. I love it. I'm into it. When we, uh, when we were telling people when I was pregnant that we were going to name her Luna. Let me, just, let me just give you guys some advice. If you are having a baby, don't tell people what you're going to name your baby because everybody has an opinion. And if it's a little bit different, they're not going to like it. I'm just going to say that. Who doesn't like Luna? Oh, my entire family. My family's like Luna as in lunatic. I was like, maybe, I don't know. TBD. And if your blue is not as dark as you would like it, like at the center, I feel like I lost my blue a little bit, you can totally do just another little blue layer right on top. Okay, now I'm going down to the bottom of the right wing. And actually, if you meet my daughter, Luna is like the perfect name for her. She's a Luna and a lunatic. Should I say that? Probably not. Al, edit that out. I'm calling CPS. <laughs> Al, edit it out, please. <gasps> please. Okay. How are we? And the lunatic. Cut that for the record. Cut that out, please. Thank you. 
Okay, so we finished our blue. It looks great. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do one more little thing which I want to show you guys. So with butterfly wings and moth wings or dragonfly wings or bee wings, whenever you're working with insect wings, most of the time they're transparent in themselves. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see the two wings overlap each other. So you should be able to see a little bit of this wing behind. So if you're looking at the reference photo here, you can see that there's actually a stronger line right here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And that's because it's actually the back, like the bottom part of the wing going behind it. So we did that the same on both sides. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm, and that's just with a little bit of blue. I'm just gonna do like another, um, just another wash. And I'm just going to um, take my brush and if this wing were just to continue and meet the body right here at this little line, I'm just gonna softly put that wash in right there. And it doesn't have to be strong. Remember, we're working in really light, soft layers here. But we just wanna give people the hint of another wing um, and give people the hint that these wings are slightly transparent and you should be able to see a little bit of that back wing underneath. Now you might run into um, a vein, I just kind of painted over it. So remember, this is just a slight, a hint, a hint of a wing behind a it. Wisp. Just a wisp, just a soft. But it's when you pay attention to those little kinds of things that you kind of um, elevate your work a little bit and show that you're paying attention to those kinds of details. Okay. That looks cool. That's it for step two. We finished it, you guys. Six minutes. Four and a half. <laughs> Four and a half. We're like 10 minutes into this and we're almost halfway dead. Um, great, great. So the next step we're gonna do is step three, which is the edges of the moth, um, which are actually rainbow colored. You can see here that they kind of go from purple to orange to yellow um, on both sides. So they start purple and then they mix, they kind of spread out. Um, so we're gonna do that, but uh, one little Warning I should give you is if your moth is still very wet, don't do this part yet. Or when you go to do it, leave a little, little, little white space in between because we don't want that rainbow color bleeding into the, to the wings. Mm -hmm. So just be aware. So to do this, I'm actually, because we're mixing these colors, right? We don't have an orange, so we're going to kind of make orange. But I'm gonna, actually going to start with the pink or the magenta. I'm going to take my magenta and just kind of um, in, this, in the middle part of this wing, I'm gonna go ahead and make my magenta line. So I'm just following the edge of the wing, just like that. I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna grab my yellow. I'm gonna leave off kind of where my uh, magenta was. I'm just gonna touch that with yellow and that should turn orange. And then I'm going to just continue that yellow all the way, kind of just that curve, to the curve of that wing. So just by doing that, we're letting the colors actually mix on our painting. We're not mixing them on our palette. We're doing it right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm just going to take my yellow, go across, and then go a little bit into that magenta and that's gonna turn orange. Bam! That's a round two? This is a round two. I switched my round that's two because so I'm easy. doing my thin lines. Easy peasy, right? Okay, let's do it on the other side. Easy peasy, beautiful. <laughs> cover girl. Easy peasy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna take my magenta. I'm gonna go just towards the, in the center of the wing. Um, if you have to turn it so you're not resting your hand on your moth, feel free to do so. Mine's pretty dry, so I feel comfortable kind of touching that. And you're just gonna kind of outline it. Just the middle part there. Rinse your brush, grab some yellow. <laughs> I like to mix it up, okay? 
I live on the edge. Like Grab I always say, <laughs> Grab some yellow. We're going to touch that magenta just a little bit to make that orange. Sometimes um, the color will get too strong that you have to go back and actually get yellow again. So I just got some yellow again. And I'm not, I'm not following this line all the way to the, um, to the body. I'm just going to go like halfway with this yellow. And then grab some yellow and do it on the other side. We're just going, we're just going around to the top part. <laughs> you guys, you're doing great. When I die, I want you to outline me in magenta. <laughs> I have one wish. One wish? Like outline a painting of you? A painting of you or your actual... No, like the murder outline. Oh, great, great, great. Do you want me to do a rainbow or just magenta? Just magenta. Okay, it's great. A great color. It, you know what? It really is one of my favorites. Okay, so when we do this part of the outlining for the moth, I'm actually going to do this magenta um, kind of right here at this bottom before it you know, kind of turns to about this section right here. So I'm just going to follow this line. Remember, if you want a thin line, you just do light pressure with your paintbrush. And also, this is your painting. If you want the entire thing to be lined in magenta because you love it, do it. Guilty. This is your world, okay? It's your painting. You can do whatever you wish. Guilty. Guilty. My moth will be all magenta. Okay, you overlap it a little bit to make that orange. And then you just continue it with the yellow. That's it. Gorgeous. Now, if you want it to be thicker in some areas, you can always go back over it. Beautiful, beautiful. And then I'm actually going to continue this magenta going down using the yellow, same thing. Let it mix a little bit, let it get that little orange tinge before it changes to yellow. And then finish it off in a nice bright yellow. Just like that. Now, if you want a purple um, hue to um, where that magenta meets the wing, is you can actually mix a little bit of magenta with the blue, with the Tahoe blue. That's going to give you a little, a nice soft purple. And you can even just like take that little soft purple and just kind of where that touches, just put a little purple. like that. I'm going to do it on the bottom part too because I like that effect. This is this really a Luna Moths look? Yeah, well, Luna Moths, um, this is probably a... It's from Harry Potter, right? <laughs> no. No, Luna Moths are a real thing, right? Yeah. No, they are. I know they are. With rainbow edges? Um, there, we, I think we actually turned up the saturation a little bit <laughs> for funsies. I'm going <laughs> to be real with you. They do have a coloring on the edges, and in some of the photos, they were really bright, um, really colorful. Um, but we might have just kind of like tweaked that just a little extra because I like bright color. Yeah, I think it's fun. Okay, I have to do, I'm doing the wing on the other side. Just do this magenta in the middle. that and then you take your yellow mix that in to get an orange and I actually have to make a new pile of yellow because it turned green oh also with these new bottles if you have a hard time they're childproof so you have to press down on them 
to open them up. Pro tip. Pro tip. Should I have said that in the beginning? Probably. Okay, and I'm just gonna continue this yellow line. All the way. And then uh, when I get to this bottom part here, I'm gonna do the yellow line at the bottom, but I'm not gonna have it touch the, go into the magenta. I'm gonna have it just go across to the front because we want it to be clear that the, the uh, wing itself is turning. So we wanna continue this front line. Okay, now we're just gonna do the top part of the moth. And you'll see here that I actually have two sections outlined. I have this top section, and then there's a bottom section right here that's outlined. Now the bottom section is actually a darker color. And to get that color, you're just gonna mix all three of your colors. It's a brown. And it's gonna turn into like, um, like a brown, almost a black like a red brown, it's like a weird color, but we just want it to be darker. So this was me mixing magenta blue and then adding in this like yellow green mixture and it turns a brownish color. Darkness. And I'm just going to kind of go along the bottom part of what I have outlined here. And if you don't want to introduce this like dark color to your moth and you want to stay within just like magenta and just have it be super colorful on the top, go for it. Ew. It's your life. It's your painting. It's your life. It's now or never. It's now. We're not going to live forever. We're not. So do what you want to do. Okay. That's all I'm I saying. I want to live while I'm alive. I want to live while I'm alive too. It's your life, do what you want. So you just kind of continue this darkness, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> all the way across. And feel free, feel free to move your paper. Okay. And then I'm just going to do this like dark out I'm not going to fill in the eyeball just yet. I'm just going to start it. Just like that. Okay, we have our dark color. It's great. It's beautiful. Now the top part of that is actually just magenta. So I'm going to go along the same thing. Are you afraid of it bleeding? Um, Looking at what it's doing now, I'm not afraid. And actually it's okay if it bleeds a little bit because then that would make the blending a little bit more seamless. It won't be so um, like blocky or sectiony. So I just went for it. I just went right away. Cause you know, you move? I, well, as I always say, I live on the edge. We're so dumb. <laughs> you know what? People love it out. They love it. It's the charm. Who knows if that's true. And I'm still using my... You probably can move to a round six for this if you want, but I'm doing good with my, my round two. Especially as I get closer to this, the edge, you see that line kind of thins out, so it's nice to have a... I have a brush here, a thin brush. <sighs> you guys, we finished step three, the edges of our moth. You're doing great. You're doing so great. And our moth is turning out. A total of nine minutes so far. No. Is this madness? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're moving on to step four, which is the body. Now that weird brown color that your moth that you use for this part of the moth, you're gonna need that color again. So um, if you lost it, just mix all the colors together again and you'll get it again. <laughs> Does that make sense? Did you lose it all? Just lose it all? it all? Just mix some more, you're fine. Okay, so it's kind of like a grayish actually. I don't know, purple, so many 
It's fine. You just want it like brownish or grayish or... Wait, what are you filling in now? The body? We're doing the body. The body. The body of the moth. Now I added a little extra blue to this to give it kind of a tint of color. And where my outlines are, you kind of see a little bit of these shapes, but it's similar if you've done, if you did the squirrel or if you've done any of my animals with like fur, it's that same kind of idea where we're gonna go in and we're gonna follow these little marks. And we're gonna put those in. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm just gonna blend it out because moth's bodies are furry. Don't know if you know that. It's a thing. Don't you dare come send to me. <laughs> I was like, I know all there is to know about moths. We do have some pretty big, do we have, pr do we have big moths here in Missouri? We have big moths. We have big moths here. <laughs> Okay, you guys, we had a little mishap, two minute tragedy where my mic died. I tried to voice over it, it did not go well. I talk a lot about random things, I don't know. So we're redoing the body. That's what we lost was the audio for the body, okay? So I'm just kind of blending out this color. Make it look good, Sarah. It looks great. I got a furry moth body going on. Moths are furry? Moths' bodies are furry. Yeah, they are. Every time I'm like, man, I really should research what I'm painting so I can talk about it. What is this, yellow? I didn't mean it to be yellow, so I'm just gonna move <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some blue. I wanted like a tiny hint of like blue purple in there for funsies. And um, somehow I had yellow on my brush, so I just pretended like that didn't happen. And I'm putting blue, just hints of blue. Blend that out. So now we have like this grayish, purplish, bluish, fuzzy body. Yeah, it's fun. It's great, it's beautiful. And then I'm going to grab some yellow and put some yellow in at the very top here and maybe add a little magenta to that to give it like an orange tint on the edges. Now when I put in the head of the moth it's going to be that same grayish purple color. It's just a light, um, light little wash on the top of the head here that goes boop just like that. That's all you really need. Are you leaving white in that orange yellow? I'm leaving a little bit of white space because I want to like communicate that um, it's like hairy and the fur part on the very top of the body, like this part has, is like where the light is touching it directly. So there, it's going to be a little bit white in that space. Sounds made up. It's a thing on the reference photo. You, it's right here. <laughs> Why are we fighting? <laughs> We're friends out. Okay. And then I'm going to do the antenna part. And those I'm just going to um, make yellow. Just going to follow these lines. And then we're going to do little like, um, uh, what are they? What are, what's going off? Spikes? Antennae. Antennae, uh, but the little fuzzies. fuzzies, fuzzies going off. The fuzz. Now, if there's too much paint or water on your brush, um, it's going to get too thick. So you want, sometimes I pick up paint usually, and then I like rub it off on the tray. So there's paint on my brush, but I still have a nice sharp point. And then that's when I do my little detail fuzzy lines. Because if I have too much paint or water on my brush, it's gonna ball up and it's gonna get um, too thick of a line. Mm, we've all been there. We have, I have. So I'm doing my little fuzzies. Just like that. And then you can go in if you lost your fuzzy shadows a little bit too much, you can just do another layer. Some doot doot doos. Now remember, don't do, don't do single strokes, furry strokes across the whole body because that's going to flatten that. So we just do a little here and there. And that's it. Yeah, our last, the last step we're going to do is the details, which is these eyeball things. <laughs> 
which I'm sure are there for either mating or survival purposes. For sure sex appeal. <laughs> I mean, it works on me. Is that, is that weird? Well, you got four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a second. You have four colorful eyes? That's great. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take some of this. She married an engineer. <laughs> I'm going to take some of this same muddy, weird, dark mixture that we've been using, and I'm just going to do the top part of my eyeball on the left-hand side in that color. Same on this side, just kind of right here. We're not going to go all the way around, just halfway around. And then on my bottom eyeballs, just the top. Keep up. I can't keep up. Okay. Just the top part. Okay, great. Excellent. You're doing amazing. Now we're going to do our purple part. I mean magenta. Right underneath that gray mixture we do a line of magenta. Both sides. And this part, it actually just has um, just a little, just, just almost like a rainbow. And then the other side is going to be just yellow. So I'm going to continue this going all the way around. Now my magenta might bleed a little bit with that yellow and make an orange. I'm not mad about it. That's great. Just more color variation for me. You're leaving a little white center. Um, almost, almost. You're getting ahead of me, Al. Okay. We're just going to continue that yellow all the way around. And then half the center is white, and then the other half is this dark color again. So it's, almost, it's just going to be like this, like, just a curve there. Curve. 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 Just like that. And now I have my cool eyeballs. That's it. You guys, we finished. We did it. Our moth looks amazing. The color is vibrant. I love it. I want to see yours, so please share it. Share your artwork. The world needs to see it. You can post it in our Facebook group called Let's Make Art Together. You can share it on Instagram and tag us in it. Let's go make art. Uh, you can show your mother. She would love to see it, I feel. Show your mother. <laughs> so thank you so much for painting along with this. Um, I can't wait to see you for the live on Tuesday night, which will be... Okay, next Tuesday. Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday at 7.15. We're painting this live. Um, you guys are all amazing. Thank you for painting with me. I absolutely love doing this, and I can't wait to see how yours turns out. Bye! Next week, we are doing... Ah, a pineapple! I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Al hates this project. I hate it. <laughs> he questioned me three times about this project, but it's so fun, it's so loose. You guys are gonna have a great time, and we're doing a background with our painting, which we don't do that often. So it's gonna be great. Watch out for that tutorial. It's gonna be released in a week, and it's gonna be awesome. So thank you so much. Bye!